students. Our today's lesson is about the figurative language. Let's begin together. Before we begin, we have to know the difference between the literal and figurative language. The literal language, you say exactly what you mean. You make no comparison and you do not exaggerate or understate the situation. You say exactly what you mean. While the figurative language, you don't say exactly what you mean. You do compare, exaggerate and understate the situation. How we use similes, metaphors, hyperboles, and other figure of speech uh, to make your writing more exciting. First of all, we will do just a small comparison between literal or figurative. Gran always turns in his homework. Is it figurative or literal? Am I saying literally what I mean? No, I'm exaggerating, so it's figurative. Number two, the water was, was rising in the river because of the rain. Am I using any comparison, any imagination? No, I say what happened exactly, so it's literal. Her teeth are like stars because they, they come out at night. So I'm comparing her teeth to stars, so this is figurative. When she sings, her voice is like velvet. Can her voice be like velvet? No, so this is figurative. Half of the class didn't complete the assignment. Am I exaggerating here? No, I'm saying the truth. I'm saying what happened. So it's literal. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Can we eat a horse? Of course not. So this is figurative. Mike was so angry, the steam was coming out of his eyes. So, can we get steams from our ears, sorry? Yes, we can't. The steam can come from the very hot thing. So, it's figurative. The zebras cried when the wise old elephant died. What do you think? It's a literal. I've told you a million times to clean your bedroom or your room. Can I say a million times? So it's figurative. Now we are going to say the seven types of figurative language. First we have simile, hyperbole, alliteration, metaphor, personification, onomatopoeia, oxymoron, Let's begin together about the simile. Simile when I compare two unlike things using words like or as. For example, when I say, her eyes were like stars. So, it's a simile. Here, the poet compares her eyes to stars by using like. I can say Susan is as gentle as a kitten. So, it's a simile. The poet compares Susan to a kitten by using as. Then we have the hyperbole. The hyperbole is an exaggeration. So dramatic. No one can believe it. Overstate to emphasize a point. When I say, for example, this bag weighs a ton. Is it right that it weighs a ton? Of course not. I'm exaggerating. So, the boat exaggerates that the bag weighs a ton to show that it is very heavy. I've told you a million times to clean up your room. So, the boat here is exaggerating. It's a hyperbole because I couldn't say a million times. To do, why is he doing this? To 
emphasize that he uh, said this word many times. Then we have the alliteration. The alliteration is the repeating of the same letter or sound, especially consonant sounds, including tongue twisters. Like, for example, when I say, Miss Warren was worried. So, Warren was and worried. I repeated the, the, the consonant W more than once in Warren was worried. When Wendy was waiting. So, we have also alliteration. The poet repeats the consonant W in when, windy, and waiting. Rubber, bobby, buggy, bumbers. So, here the, there is an alliteration. The poet repeats the consonant B in bobby, buggy, bumbers more than once. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. So here we have alliteration. The poet repeats the consonant P in Peter Piper picked pig pickled peppers. What about alliteration in poetry? A flea and a fly in a flute were in prison, so what could they do? Said the fly, let us flee. Let us fly, said the flea. So they flew through a flow in the flu. What do you think? In the first line, in the first verse, we have flea, fly, flu. There is an alliteration. The poet repeats the consonant f in flea, fly, flu. What about the second verse? Do I have it? Yes, I have it in where and what. Then the third one, I have fly and flea. Next one, I have fly and flea. The last one, I have flu, flow, flu. What about the metaphor? The metaphor is comparing two unlike things without using like or as like simile, calling one thing another, saying one thing is something else. Like, for example, when I say, he is a lion when he fights. Okay, so I'm comparing him to a lion to show that he is very brave. When I say her eyes were sparkling emeralds, so I'm comparing her eyes to the emeralds to show how much is shiny. My love is a red, red rose, so I'm comparing my love to a red rose to, to emphasize or to clarify how much I am compassionate. Then we have the personification. The personification is giving human characteristics to things that are not human. Like what? For example, when I say, the angry flood water slapped the house. So, here, who can be angry? Yes, the person. So here, the poet personifies the flood as, yes, a person who is angry. The sun smiled down on us. What do you think about it? Can the sun smile? No, sm the person only can smile. So here, it's a personification. The poet personifies the sun as a human or a, a person who can smile. Onomatoboya. The onomatoboya is the use of a word to describe or imitate a natural sound made by an object or action. Words that sound like what they mean. For example, when I say, buzz. Bow. Tweet, tweet. All of these are words that sound like what they mean. Zoom. Oxymoron. Oxymorons 
are words or phrases in which contradictory or opposite terms are used together. Like when I say, for example, jumbo shrimp. So, they are contradicting. Okay, so is this this jumbo? No, of course. Act naturally. Does she act naturally? No, of course. She put loads of makeups. Adult child. What do you think? Adult and child? How come? So, this is oxymoron. Climb down. How can I climb down? I have to climb up. So, climb and down, they are contradicting each other. They are opposites. So, they are oxymoron. Baby grand. How can be a baby and grand? It's oxymoron. So, let's have an example here. We will decide are these personification, simile, metaphor, oxymoron, hyperbole, alliteration, or onomatopoeia. The street cars are like frosted ca cakes covered with snowflakes. The west wind dances down the road. A train is a dragon that throws through the door. The band played to a small crowd at the concert. She is as tiny as a mouse. Her blonde hair shined like the sun. Susan suddenly stretched slowly. What do you think about? The first one we have, the, the street cars are like frosted cakes covered with snowflakes. Yes, excellent, it's a simile. The poet here or the writer here is comparing the street cars to frosted cakes by using like. The west wind dances down the road. Can the west wind dance? Who can dance? Yes, humans. So it's a personification. The writer here or the poet here personifies the west wind as a person who can dance. A train is a dragon that rolled through the door. Can a train be a dragon? Yes, it's a metaphor. The poet or the writer compare the dragon, uh, sorry, the train to a dragon without using as or like. The band played to a small crowd at the concert. What do you think? It's Oxmorn. Can we play a band, a big band, play for small crowd? Can we be small and crowd? No, of course, there is a contradiction. She is as tiny as a mouse. What do you think? Yes, excellent, it's a simile. The writer compared her to a, a mouse uh, by using as. Her blonde hair chimed like the sun. It's also a simile. The poet compared her blonde hair to the, sh the, si the shine of the sun by using like. Susan suddenly, suddenly stretched slowly. What do you think? It's alliteration. The poet or the writer repeats the consonant S in Susan suddenly stretched and slowly. Okay, let's have another example, another practice together. The lightweight fighters lost so much weight. He looked as thin as a rail. What do you think about this one? It's a... Yes, excellent. It's a simile. The poet compares the lightweight fighter huh, to be thin as a rail by using as. Polly Peters possibly played ping pong. What do you think about it? Yes, excellent. There is an alliteration. The poet repeats or the writer repeats the consonant P in Polly, Peters, positively played and ping pong. When the pitcher finished nine innings, he was hungry enough to eat a horse. Can he eat a horse? 
Of course not. It's a hyperpole. There is an exaggeration. The poet exaggerate that the uh, uh, the person is going to ride uh, to eat a horse. There is an exaggeration, which means that he was very hungry, or to clarify that he was very hungry. Crack went the bat as the pitcher hit a home run. What do you think about it? Yes, excellent. It's a, a onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia, as we said, there is the sound that means the thing. Crack. It makes the sound. The ice in the arena was as smooth as glass. So, it's a simile. The poet or the writer compared the ice to glass by using as. The kite drank the wind and laughed across the sky. Can the kite drink and laugh? Yes, excellent. It's a personification. The poet personifies the kite as a person who can drink and laugh. We ate catfish for dinner. Yes, excellent. Can we eat? What about a cat and fish? There is contradiction. So it, it's oxymoron. The trophy glistened like gold in the sun during the awards ceremony. What do you think about it? Yes, it's a simile. The poet compared the trophy to gold by using like. Happy Harry handles hand springs horribly. What do you think? There is an alliteration. The poet repeats the consonant H in the words happy Harry handles hand, spr hand spring horrible. The water was a glove that enveloped the swimmer's body. Yes, great. It's a metaphor. I'm comparing uh, the water like a glove. Not by uh, uh, without using sorry as or like. 